Hello and welcome back to my channel again guys. This is the channel where you get chance to learn a lot about different topics such as research, animal science, project management, data analysis and several other topics related to education. And time and again I also make videos on different topics related to society and awareness. So if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. So today I have come up with another video on confounding variable or nuisance variable which is really really important topic if you are in the field of research because this confounding variable might bias uh, results obtained from your study. So in this video today what I will do is I'll cover what is confounding variable and uh, I'll also give you two three examples so that you are clear of those confounding variables and also I will show you how to avoid or how to manage those confounding variables. So let's get straight into the topic. So what is confounding variable? Confounding variable is basically anything that will bias your research result. So for example, if you have two treatments A and B and you want to see the effect of those two treatments on the subject, uh, then uh, in the end what you will do is while you are analyzing data, you will have these two treatment in your study. But unknowingly or by mistake, what happened was there is one another factor in treatment A which is present in treatment A but not in treatment B. So in the end while you are analyzing uh, data, you will not know whether the effect is due to treatment A or effect is due to that unknown factor. And that unknown factor or sometimes you might know that factor as well. So that factor which is confounding your research result or that factor which is producing biasness in your research result is called uh, nuisance variable or confounding variable. Let's go into some more detailed examples. So I'll give you three examples and I'll show you how to manage those uh, confounding variables as well. So example one. example 2 and example 3. So let's say you have 90 animals and you have three treatments A, B and C. 90 animals. And you want to see the effect of protein on growth of those animals. So the protein is 20%, 25% and 30%. So what you will do is you will have let's say 9 rooms. And each room has let's say 10 animals. So you have now 90 animals, 3 treatments. So let's say you are randomly allocating treatments. So treatment A, A and let's say A here, B, 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 C, C, C. Let's do C here and let's do B here. So what you will do is you will give 20% to here, here and here, similarly 25% to here, here and here and 30% to here, here and here. Uh, and you will have a diet which uh, contains 20% protein, 25 or 30% protein. And by mistake what happened was diet A and B had a feed particle which is 4 mm size, so A and B has 4 mm size of feed whereas diet C has 5 mm size that you never noticed while you were producing feed but uh, by mistake the nozzle size of that machine was bigger while you were formulating feed for C and that turned out to be 5 mm whereas A and B turned out to be 4 mm. So while analyzing what happens is you may not be able to know whether the effect on growth of those animals is because of uh, those three treatment or because of the feed particle size and this 5 mm is a confounding variable here because that 5 mm produced biasness in your research result. If it doesn't produce then that might be okay but if it produce effect um, on your research result so for example if the feed particle is big and by some chance by chance the, the nutrients protein and all other vitamins have been mixed well in that feed particles that means that nutrient supply will be better in those group of animals and maybe C has better growth because of that thing then that is confounding your research result. So that is called nuisance variable because that is creating noise. 
So in this case, this 5 mm size is a confounding variable. Whereas if all of them had uh, 4 mm, then that wouldn't be a confounding variable. So this is one example. So the another example would be, let's say this is the same experiment and you have again uh, nine rooms. So let's say you did a, uh, a, a, b, 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 c, c, c. So everything is same. Again, uh, you want to see the effect of 20%, 25% and 30% of protein and you have 10 animals in each room. So there are nine rooms. So what happened was uh, for some reason, uh, this area had more sunlight compared to those two areas. So those two area. So this has more uh, good sunlight. Whereas this has poor sunlight. As you can see here, uh, only those three rooms which has one treatment B and two treatment C has better good sunlight and maybe because of the good sunlight animals got more vitamin D and that also might have affected their growth bone growth as well so that might produce biasness in your result research result and it may not be because of the protein content it may be because of that additional vitamin D as well so that is another example so in this case good sunlight is a confounding variable and let's talk about another example. Uh, let's say you are conducting a survey where you want to see the impact of education on, on the livelihood of two villages. So let's say village one and village two and you want to see the impact of. So this is village one, this is village two. Uh, so you have, let's say, 5,000 people here and 5,000 people here and you did a survey and um, you want to see Im see the effect of education on the different criteria of livelihood. But for some reason what happened was this village one turned out to be uh, poorer and this was this turned out to be wealthy. You didn't notice that earlier during your study but while you are analyzing your data you notice that so that means you may not know whether uh, while analyzing data you may not know whether the effect is due to difference in education or difference in money so money also might easily affect livelihood so in the end you might not know whether education created effect in your research result or or uh, wealthiness or poverty created effect so there or it there might be interaction between um, poverty and education as well. So education, uh, so poverty confounded the education in this example. So that means poverty is a confounding variable in this, in this particular example. So in this example, size of, size of feed is confounding variable. In this example, um, this sunlight or housing environment sunlight is a confounding variable and in this example poverty is a confounding variable. So these are the three examples I hope it is clear to you now um, from these examples what confounding variable means which creates noise in your uh, research study. So now I will show you how to manage these uh, these confounding variables. So how to manage them guys? The first way is to avoid them or eliminate them. So in this example, if you are a little bit more careful, then you can easily avoid this mistake. So that means you will have a same machine for all these treatment, all these treatment and you will have same fit size. So 4 mm for A, 4 mm for B and 4 mm for C. That means you easily avoided that that mistake or that error so that is one way to uh, one way to manage those confounding variables so if you avoid them you will not need to worry about them but in this and this example you may not be able to avoid them 
because the housing there will always be good sunlight either you have to create a new house where there is exactly same sunlight which might be really expensive so what you will have to do here is in this example you will have to include that sunlight in the design of your experiment and if you include that sunlight in the design of your experiment you can easily include that sunlight in the in during the statistical analysis so i'll show you how to do that so let me wipe this so this is the uh, this is the first type where uh, this six treatment had poor sunlight and here we have good sunlight so let's write exactly same so nine room and this has good sunlight and this has poor sunlight and if you see here this this three these three rooms which has good sunlight has three treatments but two of them are c and one of them is b so what you can do is this area which has a good sunlight you can include all the treatments so for example a here uh, B here and C here. So that means all the treatment received good sunlight. Here treatment A didn't receive good sunlight. So treatment A might already have negative effect because of the poor sunlight. But now there is one treatment A, one treatment B and one treatment C. So that means all the treatment received good amount of sunlight. So sunlight will not affect the treatment. So now what you can do here is A again here, A again here, B here, C here. Um, B C here and B here. So, as you can see here, you included that in the in the you included good sunlight in the design of experiment. So, so that is let's say this is a block one, block two, and block three. So block one, block two, and block three. And this is this became easily a randomized complete block design. This was a kind of complete randomized design, and now this became randomized complete block design. And you included sunlight in the design, and now you can easily see whether the effect is because of the treatment, diet, um, or because of the sunlight. Because you can easily include sunlight in the in the statistical analysis. And in this example, what you can do is you can include two more villages. Let's say village three and village four. And this is let's say wealthy village and this is poor village and you can make factorial combination where you will see um, the effect on effect on livelihood from either education or wealth or interaction of education and wealth so previously you only wanted to see the impact of education but now you can't avoid the wealth or poverty so you included that in the design and you are also going to see the interaction and uh, in nature what happens is it's not only one factor which impacts the research result it's usually the combination of many factors that interact among each other and uh, so the effect in your study so this design becomes even better and this design is again even better than this design because you are incorporating this sunlight in the in the design of the experiment so basically when you want to manage this confounding variable what you do is if you can avoid them or eliminate them if you cannot avoid them or eliminate them include them in the design as i mentioned here and then use that um, use that in your statistical analysis so this is the end of uh, today's video guys um, i hope you liked the content of my my today's video uh, if you like the content uh, then please feel free to leave your comment down in the comment section also please do not forget to subscribe to my channel i'll see you again in next video until then bye thank you